Okay, we're starting workshop number three, the seven states of tension for component two, exploring a role in the terrible fate of Humpty Dumpty. Okay, everybody, can you walk around the space for me, please? Just kind of a normal, neutral pace for you. Now, we're gonna call that pace five, okay? Five is kind of a natural, neutral pace of speed and walking for you, okay? Now, we're gonna bump it up a little bit and we're gonna to go to six, which is a little bit faster. Then seven, try not to walk around with anyone, use all the available space. Now we're gonna go up to nine, so we're quite a bit faster than a normal walk, okay? Do keep your peripheral vision out so you're not bumping into anybody. 10, you're basically lightly running, lightly running. And we're gonna bring it right down to four. So that's slightly slower than a normal pace. Three, two, and one is as slow as you can walk without actually stopping. So you are still moving, you are still in motion, but it's about as slow as it can possibly be. Can we jump to six, please? Concentrate. So remember, six is one up from a normal walking pace. Try not to walk around with anyone else. Eight. Concentrate, really think about what eight would look like. Nine, <coughs> as fast as you can without breaking into a run. Three, two, and then back up to five. And can you use five to go back to your place in the circle, please, okay? Okay. Now, I want you to cast back in your mind's eye what it was like to be at 9 and 10, what it was like to be at 1. And I want you to think about when you look back on that experience, how do the different numbers or the different speeds affect your movements? How do they affect your movements? Did you feel more in control, for example, when you were slower? Did you feel more in control when you were faster? How are your movements affected? Natalie, how are your movements affected, would you say? When you were when you were moving up kind of top levels of speed, how would you describe your movement there? Um, more like up control, because you're trying to like you're trying to like control where you're like going. Like you're going too fast. Okay. Alright, so the speed. You're sort of losing a bit of control, at least that was your experience, okay? Now, think about movements that are big and small. Think about the way your legs were moving, how big of a stride you were taking. Were you taking little tiny strides, or were you taking big strides? And think about the differences. So, Hannah, when you were moving really slowly, how did that affect the stride or the amount of space you had between putting one foot down and the other? Did you, did you walk, was your stride a little bit shorter or was it longer when you were walking quite slowly? It was quite shorter. Okay, quite a bit shorter. Okay, all right. Anyone feel more controlled when they were going quicker rather than slower? Did anyone find that going slower, it was harder to control, Thomas? Okay, and that's a bit more natural for you to go faster. Yeah. Okay, that's a really interesting. I think when you're slower, you've got a little bit more issue with your balance, don't you? If you're kind of just walking very slowly, you have to maintain your balance a bit more than, than perhaps if you were going quickly. George, did you want to say about that? Yeah, because I felt like when I was going slower, more balance. Okay, okay, all right. So, good, we're gonna keep that warm up in mind as we move through the exercises, okay? All right, so we're gonna explore an approach to acting that uses the body. So this is gonna mainly be focusing on physicality and physical theater.
to display varying degrees of tension. Okay? So, this is an acting system that would help actors transition into emotions that could be incorporated into the scene. So, Mr. Jacques Lecoq, really unfortunate name for us in England here, he assigned different levels of tension to different emotions. Okay? So, for example, in this video clip from the film Mon Oncle, the moment the actor walks into the scene, he's portraying the fourth level of tension. He's quite curious. He's walking around the kitchen, touching things, breaking things, looking suspicious. He senses that there's a problem about to occur. Okay? So, let's have a seat in the audience and let's see what this looks like. Now, this is an old French film and it's all mine. So you don't need to worry about the dialogue. Just look at the way that he's moving. Okay. One to seven. So they're kind of similar to the exercise that we've just done with speeds, except that this acting system attaches emotions to them. Okay? So, actually, I'm not sure why it's number one. So, actually, number one is lethargic, catatonic, very little movement. Number two is quite laid back energy. Number three is economic or neutral. Number four is alert and curious, which is kind of the level we've just seen. Five, we're getting a bit more heightened, anxiety, passionate, suspense, reactive. Six, anger or joy, so quite intense emotions. And then seven, so extreme that you're almost frozen. Now, I'd like you to find a space in the drama studio where you're sat primarily by yourselves, please. So can you find one of those places? Okay. <coughs> you to be completely floppy as if all the bones in your body had disappeared. So can you just lay down on the ground completely floppy? Okay? So that's your first level. The least amount of tension that you can possibly have. Okay? Now we're going to try and play around with number seven. So I'd like you to slowly get yourselves up, slowly wake up or get yourselves up, move up, stand and get to a standing position. Nice. And once you've done that, I want you to imagine that you are completely rigid. So have both of your arms out.
Exactly, George. Exactly. Everything's got tension in it. Everything. You are tensing absolutely everything. Okay? You can look down if you're feeling a little bit self-conscious about this. But there should be tension in every single bit of your hands, your legs, your shoulders. Put your shoulders up by your ears. Really, really tense. Excellent. That's brilliant facial expressions, Neil. And good. Let them relax and just let your arms relax for a minute. Okay? All right. So, how might we use different levels of tension if you're preparing for a role in Humpty Dumpty? Why would that be useful? When you're thinking about the character. Cody, what do you think? Yeah. That's excellent, okay? So the situation changes in the play, doesn't it? So perhaps at the beginning, when they're trying to get Terry to climb the pylon, most of the gang members are very excited. They're really, really, you know, um, they're really keen for it to happen. And then when they realize that he's died, they might be completely rigid with shock about what's happened. So all of these tensions change because the story changes in the play. All right? Okay. Now, we're going to explore an acting exercise associated with each of the seven states of tension. Okay? So go ahead and have a seat where you are. I'm going to give you a number. So remember your number. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Two. Okay? So remember if you're a one or a two, because that's going to be important in a minute when we have a little bit more. Okay. All right. Now, what I'd like you to do is I want you to, I'm going to talk you through the exercise. These are all minor movement exercises. Okay? So I'd like you to lay down back on the ground. We're looking at number one again. So this is like super floppy. Yeah? Okay. Now, I want you to imagine that you had a very, very late night last night. You didn't get to bed at 3 a.m. And your alarm clock goes off at 6 a.m. You're very tired. You can't see clearly. Your brain is in a fog. And you do not have complete control over your limbs. So there is almost no tension in your body at all. So I'm going to count you down. Three, two, one. I'm going to give you the sound of the alarm clock, and I want you to try to turn off the alarm clock and get ready for work or school. But you're imagining that you've got almost no tension in your body. You have had literally three hours of sleep. So let's practice that through as a group, and then we'll watch each other's performances. Three, two, one. Ring, 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 ring. Turn off the alarm, wherever it is. Now you need to get up. Get yourself out of your bed. Remember, you are at the lowest level of tension and energy. Try to get yourself up. You should feel completely like you don't have a bone in your body. You're just like a jellyfish. So you're getting dressed for school. Try to get yourself down to, from school or to school. Get yourself dressed. Maybe putting your trousers on or your jacket. Okay. And freeze. Excellent. Okay, sit down. Ones, you are going to begin, you're going to do the same exercise again. Twos, you are going to watch. Okay? So, ones, back in bed. Okay, so twos, make sure that you can see that you're close to somebody so you can watch carefully. Okay, so repeating the same exercise again. Three, Two, one, alarm goes off.
slowly get yourself up. You've had three hours of sleep. You can hardly see in front of you. You're so tired. Your brain is so foggy, but you've got to get up and get dressed and get going. Try not to have any tension in your body and freeze. Excellent. Have a seat. That's really nicely done. Ones. Okay. Twos. So if you were, so twos, I want you to think about the performances that you saw. What kind of characterization could you use for that state? Is there any character at any moment in Humpty Dumpty, <coughs> perhaps, where we could use a level of tension like that? Absolutely catatonic. What do you think, Ben? Um, could it be like uh, Terry who goes home to his lost mom? What, after he's been bullied? Yeah. Oh, that's a brilliant idea. Why do you think that, why would that be your choice for, um, for that? <laughs> um, I don't know. Do you think he would just be really, he'd just be so fed up and so exhausted he could barely walk kind of thing? Yeah. Okay, all right, excellent. Okay, now, we're gonna move on to the second state. Twos, I know you haven't performed yet, but you're gonna be in the spotlight in a minute, okay? All right, now, level two is laid back. You can have a look at the laid back corner bear there, okay? So, you have come around just enough to be in control of what you're doing. There's no tension in your body. You are relaxed. Everything is fluid. You've got no worries. You can do anything for the benefit of anyone who's watching. In this state, you feel that you can tackle anything. Okay? This is what we would call sort of California surfer dude at the beach. No tension, laid back, chilled just enough tension to move around slightly, okay? So, we are all surfers, waxing our surfboards and getting ready to get, to catch the perfect wave in the ocean, okay? So can we stand up? Remember, we're dudes, we're surfer dudes. So I want you to be waxing your surfboard. Can everyone have a go with that, please? Yep, waxing your surfboard, polishing it up, okay? Yeah putting it under your arm, and then you're gonna walk into the waves. Walk into the waves, put the surfboard on the water, okay? You can kind of put it around, right? And then hop on your surfboard and have a little ride. Remember, super laid back, super chill, having a great time on those waves. Excellent, fabulous. Okay, ones, have a seat. We're gonna watch the twos now, okay? All right. So, twos, you ready? We'll start again. Just around the space, focusing on your own performance, okay? So, grab your surfboard. Go ahead and get it ready. Put some wax on it. Have a look out on the beach. The, the waves look great. Tuck it under your arm, okay? And head off into the waves. There we go. Think about your body language. Think about your, your state, okay? Put the surfboard all the ways. Jump on, okay? And have a go. Let's see you bouncing all the ways. Really relaxed, laid back. Excellent, have a seat to use. Great job, okay? Right, so, who can think of a moment or a character in Humpty Dumpty where you would be at that level of tension? What do you think, Neil? Maybe Pete, because he doesn't care what he's saying. Okay, so perhaps Pete, who's the gang member who's making all the jokes after Terry died. Do you see him kind of at like a level two, sort of laid back and relaxed? Maybe not always, Pete. He might sometimes be like excited. Okay. But sort of as a general general sense, yeah. that would be for him. All right, Ben, what do you think? Good, like when the um, gang members get a uh, when the gang members get, sorry? I have a question about the police and they're trying to cover up. Oh, right. That's interesting. Do you think all of them would be relaxed, or maybe just one of them more relaxed than the other? You don't mind swiveling the camera so that would be great. So who, who do you think, then, might be um, relaxed? 
Stubbs. Okay, maybe Stubbs would be quite relaxed for talking to the police, Thomas.
but you can't go too fast because if you go too fast, you're going to step on something and blow yourself up, okay? So let's take a moment and step forward and get to the other side, looking carefully and curiously about not stepping on any line. Okay, be sure not to put a foot wrong. Once you get past something, you might tiptoe around something. Yep, those people in your way are a little bit of an inconvenience. Yep, very nice. Excellent. Good. Wonderful. Very nice. Okay, so Thomas, do you see a moment where we could use this in Humpty Dumpty for number four? Curious and alert. Maybe. That's such an. That's such an. I. I think that would suit Leslie in some of those scenes. Yes, Mary. What do you think? All right. They're kind of. They're a little bit gossipy. Kind of wondering what's going on. Natalie. Okay, all right, good. So we're, we're getting there. We're attaching different states of energy to different characters and situations. Really nice. Okay, now, a bit more anxious this time, okay? I want you to walk around the room searching for a bomb. You must defuse the bomb or it will go off. Off you go, a bomb. A bomb. Okay, so can you have a look around the room? Okay, time is of the essence, go. See if you can find a bomb to diffuse. Okay, lots of anxiety, lots of suspense. You don't want it going off. You can pick up the pace a little bit. There's a crisis about to happen. Keep your eyes open. Movement going at each moment. Okay, and freeze. Excellent. Now, there is a bomb in the room. It has exploded. So you are running away from the bomb to save yourself. Let's say the bomb is going off in that corner. Go, run away from it as quick as you can. Right, no, there's something over there. Change directions. You've got to go someplace else. It's safe. Okay, fantastic. Find a space, a safe space. You have just won the lottery. You're getting one million dollars. Can you celebrate with the person next to you, please? Yep. Congratulate the person next to you. Fantastic. And freeze. Now, this is absolute fear. So we're going to imagine that someone's come through that door pointing a loaded gun. Can you turn around, please, and hands up? All right. Absolutely frozen. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. And come back to the register circle. Very nice work, everybody. Okay? Really good work on those things. Okay? All right. Now, what I thought you did really well in that exercise was you were very committed to listening and following through with the physical theater. Well done. Now, we're going to try to apply some of the things that you were already beginning to make links to. Okay? Now, we're going to look at two separate scenes. Page 42, scene 11. Do you want to run and get your scripts? Okay? Now, scene 11 is the gang. And page 24 is the Dumpton family. So, can you group yourselves into those rough groups? Now, there's um, page 42 for the gang. Page 24 for the family, okay? Now, there's a little bit of an issue because Terry is in both of those scenes, okay? So, um, who's playing the policeman again, if you mind me? Okay, George, if it's okay, can you come to this group and read in for Terry because the policeman's not in the scenes that we're looking at right now, okay? All right, so what I'd like you to do is, I'd like you to read through your scene and make a decision as to what level of tension your character is at. And I'd like you to try to have different levels. So don't everybody choose four.